We're in Wes Neal's Handbook on Athletic Perfection, and we've got a very unusual chapter, chapter 12, The Praise Performance. In a day and age of music and all kinds of outward expressions of how to maximize our performance, uh, psych ourselves up, get ourselves prepared, I think it's a really appropriate chapter. We can praise God with our athletic abilities. How can it be? Well, we can do that with a variety of instruments in music. Yes. Is music wrong? No. Music is great. In fact, Wes focuses on Psalm 150, which is the last psalm. And in this psalm, it's about praising the Lord with everything you've got. And in this, the psalmist is actually using musical instruments to demonstrate how you can praise the Lord through sound and how it connects with your body. I mean, remember way back in the day, in the Old Testament, you see militaries going out, the nation of Israel and its and and its military going out and getting ready for battle with musicians. (laughs) They were were playing. I mean, they were playing to the glory of God. And they were using the different musical instruments to connote uh, expressive types of worship that fit the particular circumstance that they were in. And we're going to talk through that a little bit. Can you praise God this way? So as you read through Psalm 150, uh, here's what it says. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty expanse, which means praise him everywhere, even out in the middle of a football field. (laughs) Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with harp and lyre. Praise him with timbrel and dancing. Praise him with stringed instruments and pipe. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. (laughs) And so, you know, as we go through some of these musical categories, I just want to remind us that some of the things that sometimes you may hear in, in a weight room, Uh, Maybe out in the middle of a football field as teams are practicing, you hear blaring music at a lot of practices now. You may not always hear music that glorifies the Lord. In fact, there's a good chance that you won't, particularly if you go to a, a secular institution. But even at a lot of Christian schools, there's a lot of things that are maybe expressed that don't necessarily represent the Lord Jesus Christ and God and his word. And so whoever is in charge of the music, if you're a Christian, perhaps you have an opportunity to glorify Christ or to help steward a culture in glorifying Christ through music in ways that would help match the particular athletic performing that you'll do that particular day. And so let's talk about it. Wes talks about it. He gets pretty uh, definitive about it. First of all, it's a, it's a great psalm. He loves this psalm. Because it explains where we praise God, why we praise God, and how we praise God. Where, verse 1, why, verse 2, and how, verses 3 through 5. And it also explains who should praise him in verse 6. So let's define what the Bible means when we're told to uh, praise the Lord. First of all, let's just talk about um, the idea of where. Where are we to praise God? In times past, the word sanctuary referred primarily to the temple, but today it's understood to refer to any place where God dwells throughout his entire creation. So basketball court, football field, you know, in the locker room, um, uh, on the baseball diamond, on the track. You can praise God as you're sitting uh, as a fan, mom, dad. You can praise God on the sideline, coach. Uh, You can praise God on a wrestling mat. There's no place on this earth where you cannot praise God. Why praise God? We're to praise him because of the mighty things he has done and for who he is. 
We applaud the man who designs and builds great skyscrapers and buildings and architecture, etc. But greatest applause ought to go to the one who designed all the material <laughs> and where that material comes from and also gives the creative resources in men's minds and hearts to build that way. You can't even begin to count the stars in the sky, the galaxies and, and the universe is created by God. And there's many scriptures, obviously, that refer to that. Um, so how do we praise God? Well, Psalm 150 verses 3 through 5 talks about it, that we can really praise God in three basic areas of instrumentation used in an orchestra. So you have like uh, the wind or the stringed instruments and the percussion. That has a distinct sound and, and a use. And and um, you have the uh, the trumpets. You have the, um, those are the horned instruments as part of the athletic orchestra that Wes is talking about. We're going to get to that in a second. Uh, but also you have the harp and lyre, which are stringed instruments. Um, so, you know, you talk about the percussion, you talk about the trumpet, uh, uh, the wind or horned instruments, and also the stringed instruments. So let's just talk about the trumpet, first of all. It, it tends to create an excitement and stirs deep emotions. I've noticed that NFL music, NFL films, back in the day when I was growing up, they played classical music while they were showing replays of the last week's ball games in the NFL. And they used slow motion and up-close shots and ground-level shots and high-level shots and a variety of different uh, ways to show the actions of these players. But they it's very strategic how they designed their music to go along with it in classical music. And oftentimes you saw a trumpet orientation to comeback victories or teams that were moving the ball down the field and in efficiency on the football field. And you saw great exploits while they were horned instruments. It, it stirs deep emotions and the ability to rise back when you've been down. Talk about the stringed instruments, the harp, the lyre. Uh, they they kind of require a fine touch and a, a produce, they produce a, like a flowing um, melody. And it's like a wide receiver running a pass pattern. It's a delicacy uh, to it. Um, so that's a very creative way of, of demonstrating athletic ability out on the field and how it fits with a particular musical instrument. And then uh, you have the timbrel, which was the percussion uh, instrumentation and you you have uh you know clanging cymbals and and I don't maybe I shouldn't use the word clanging resounding cymbals and you have you know soft cymbals but you also have drums you've got the beat of a drum a fast uh drum uh, and 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 then you also have the big pounding you know sounds uh kind of a booming drum these drums maybe remind you of the aggression, the, the, the symbols, the aggressive nature of that particular sport. So it might be a linebacker lowering his, his pads and just blasting into a running back and lifting him off the turf. Um, <laughs> that picture in slow motion with the symbols and the percussion going was a powerful reminder uh, as I was growing up. And so there is a way to praise the Lord through instrumentation, and I think it would behoove the Christian coach, the particularly today's Christian strength coach and conditioning coach. They're often in charge of the music. Um, if God has placed you in a level of stewardship for your team that way, with practice sessions or weight room sessions or locker room uh, music, etc., if you're a believer, man, you got an opportunity to help steward a culture. I know a lot of times we want to look at the culture of our team or the ethnicity of our team and decide which music we listen to based on that. And I understand if you're in a public school, um, you know, you're not, uh, it's, it's not just a Christian orientation. But for the believer, you should always be thinking big picture. And perhaps you have the permission to set the tone that would uh, help remind a culture that hmm, there is a rhyme and a reason to music and, and that there is a way to worship God 
And for the non-believer, he'll never do it no matter what kind of music he's listening to. Not until he becomes a believer can he really do that. But for the believers on your team, it's a golden opportunity for them to grow. So think about praising God in the music that you're listening to because it is huge today on teams. But obviously, let that not only be the way you praise God. It's not just through music. It may be completely silent in a stadium. It, it may just, the, the, the music in the stadium might just be crowd noise. And, and that's usually what happens during a game. During the actual competition, there's no music playing. But perhaps the music that you've been listening to all week in practice, or the music that you listen to your headphones, if it's God glorifying, that continually plays. <laughs> the reminder of music is powerful. It's, it's almost like seeing something when you're 10 years old, you never forget it. When you hear music and songs played over and over and over again, I can remember old songs that I've heard. I haven't heard them in 40 years, and yet I remember what they say, and I remember the, I remember the melody in my head, and it can, it can just dance around in there for a long period of time. It's very, very powerful that God has given us the capacity to embrace music, to embrace things that are perhaps um, maybe outside of the normal fringes of right where we're at. Maybe it's a, it's a message that was given to us. Maybe it's a visual sight, perhaps. It could be a picture of a mountain. <laughs> Anything that would remind us of the glory of God that would help unleash the physical abilities that God has given us because it's been dealt with internally. In other words, you've thought through, man, this picture, this song reminds me of my relationship with Jesus Christ. It reminds me of a price that was paid on my behalf, Jesus going to the cross. It's some area of life in the Bible, perhaps, that I've read that that song or that picture reminds me of, and I just want to give praise and glory to God while I'm doing my sport. So, Wes is reminding us, let God's presence shine forth through us. Reflect on these kinds of things. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord with your speed and your quickness and your, and your dexterity and your strength and your stamina and your explosiveness. Let your performance sing praises to the Lord. It's a great way to sing, praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord, by the way you play, the expression of those actions. But it starts internally. It starts what you soak your brain up with. And if you put poison in your brain, that's what's going to come out when you get squeezed. But if you put God's fruit, the fruit of his word, through music and through his word and through perhaps even pictures and focal points that remind you of the incredible love that he has for us, that will get unleashed during different athletic episodes during your performance.